Did you know that Rachel Maddow follows me on Twitter? She didn't follow that many people. So this is, yeah, she really, I could DM her. I'm not going to. I have very little respect for what she's doing. And uh, I, 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 I think what she's doing is it's a disservice to America. There's a reason I bring up Rachel Maddow's Twitter account in this story, because she retweeted some tweets from Mr. Ken Delanian pertaining to the Mueller report. So first, NBC News has confirmed that some members of special counsel Robert Mueller's team have expressed frustration that A.G. Barr cleared Trump of obstruction, and they believe the evidence is stronger than Barr suggested in his March letter summarizing Mueller's findings. She then retweeted, NBC News is also reporting that some of the Mueller team says his findings paint a picture of a campaign whose members were were manipulated by a sophisticated Russian intelligence operation. Some of that information may be classified. Maddow tweeted out these two things. And this is in reference to this story from the New York Times. Some on Mueller's team see their findings as more damaging for Trump than Barr revealed. But what could that really mean? Well, of course, as you know, Rachel Maddow is obsessed. She's built a career on a lie, a conspiracy theory. And if she stops now, her ratings tank. They're already tanking around 20%. So what can she do? If she falters anymore, she'll become completely irrelevant. So of course, she's going to tweet out those two specific tweets from Ken Delanian. Excuse me. Do you want to know why that's so damn funny? Do you want to see what else Ken Delanian tweeted that she didn't retweet? Let's talk about a lie by omission. She retweeted the two things that support her narrative. And then what did she forget to tweet? It's important to note that this doesn't change the legal conclusion by the attorney general, who is ultimately in charge of the investigation, that there was no criminal case for conspiracy or obstruction. But as a political matter, it's a big deal. Oh, ah, Rachel, you forgot to retweet the last thing that Ken Delanian posted, that some people are upset because it does make Trump look bad, but that it doesn't in any way change the conclusion. There is no criminal case for conspiracy obstruction. What does that mean? It means Trump probably looks stupid. One thing I have repeatedly maintained throughout all of this reporting as a reasonable and rational human being is that in all likelihood, the collusion narrative is done. I just, it would be a great stretch, a, a ridiculous probability that Barr is lying about the conclusions of the Mueller report and Mueller doesn't care. No, in all likelihood, with no new indictments, Mueller's, uh, the, the summary from Barr with the quote, it's done. However, I have maintained there is likely some damning information in the report's going to make Trump look bad. It may even result in other districts like the Southern District of New York uh, uh, indicting some of the people in Trump's circle. That's all fair. We're not there yet. Where we are, no collusion, no obstruction. End of story. It's not absolute. I'm just talking about beyond a reasonable doubt, and it would be really, really unlikely if that was the case. So as we are learning that some people on Mueller's team are upset, what are they really upset by? They're mad that Barr, who is attorney general, didn't, wasn't mean enough to Trump. Because of course, there's no evidence for, uh, there, there's no, there's no uh, evidence of conspiracy. There's not enough for a criminal case against them in any of these capacities, just probably poor judgment or making them look bad. And that's about it. Okay. Is Trump uh, a doof who was tricked by Russians? It's not hard to trick people. Seriously. Do you trust people? That things can happen. Yeah, well, that sucks. Did Trump do anything wrong? Apparently not. So where are we? Mueller's team is upset because Barr didn't make Trump look dumb. But Rachel Maddow, of course, I love it. She only puts out the first two and ignores what Ken says as a caveat to his reporting. It doesn't change the the legal findings. And what's funny is there's criticism being thrown towards this New York Times article. Now, Now, NBC claims that they corroborated this. But apparently, one of the issues with this, let's read the first paragraph. Some of Robert Mueller III's investigators have told associates that Attorney General William P. Barr failed to adequately portray the findings of their inquiry and that they were more troubling for President Trump than Mr. Barr indicated, according to government officials and others familiar with the simmering frustrations. Oh my God, please let me teach you. Welcome to journalism school, everybody. My, I'm going to be your teacher for the day, Timothy Poole. I'm going to teach you some basics about journalism and help you better understand the nightmare that is this first paragraph. First, I love how they use very specific language to protect themselves in the event that they're wrong. Some of Robert Moore's investigators, how many? Two? Two interns? Uh, senior members? People just below Robert Who? 
Who's upset and why? OK, some. What does that mean? Nothing. We're told nothing. We're told literally nothing. OK, let's move on. Have told associates. Associates? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Let's try this again. Some of Robert Mueller's investigators, we don't know how many, we don't know who, we don't know of what prominence, have told associates. Associates to who? Associates to who? What does this, uh, Jewel Osco Associates, you're from Chicago, you'll get that one. Like an associate at McDonald's? There's a really funny meme on Reddit. I don't know if you've seen the Winnie the Pooh meme where he's wearing normal clothes and the next one he's wearing a fancy suit. The top one said, I, I, I work the drive through at McDonald's. The bottom said, I'm an associate at an international firm handling $20 billion in sales, and I'm the official liaison for the automotive industry. You see, you see how you do that? I'm sorry. Have told associates that Attorney General William P. Barr failed to adequately portray the findings of their inquiry and that they were more troubling for Trump. Okay. What, is this, what does this mean? At the, at the bare minimum, it could be that two interns working with Mueller in some capacity told one of their other intern buddies, one of their associates at a luncheon, that they thought the Mueller report probably had more in it. It doesn't even mean, okay, it says investigator, so intern is probably a stretch, but you get the point. It doesn't even mean these people know what's in the report. This is important too. We don't know to what access his investigators have to the full report. There's classified information. I'm sure they're mostly privy to it. That's fine. Failed to adequately portray the findings of their inquiry and that they were more troubling for President Trump than Mr. Barr indicated. What does that mean? It gets worse. According to government officials and others familiar with the simmering frustrations. How awesome. Welcome to journalism in 2019. What they're saying is, this is fantastic. Our anonymous source told us that someone told them that a couple people told them they're upset. I clap for you, New York Times. This is absolutely fantastic. And this is the news. And then Rachel Maddow jumps on it. Woohoo! And, and, and here we go. I hope you're all ready for a big, nice roller coaster ride of complete and utter nonsense of conspiracy theory because the New York Times has a source, a, a, more than one source, who claims that another person told them that some other people told them a thing. Oh my God. Seriously. Imagine this. A friend of mine knows a guy who was told by Mueller's people that X happened. That's not verifiable. How do you report this New York Times? What does it even mean? At stake in the dispute, the first evidence of tension between Mr. Barr and the special counsel's office. No, no, quite literally, no, just stop. Because you're giving fuel to conspiracy wingnuts like Rachel Maddow, who completely omits what Ken Delanian actually said. None of this changes the determination. The collusion gate, the Russia gate collusion truthers need to stop. Okay, well, the DOJ hit back. This story from the Daily Caller DOJ hits back at New York Times and Washington Post stories on Mueller report. The Justice Department explained why it did not release summaries included in special counsel Robert Mueller's report after reports surfaced that his investigators felt Attorney General Bill Barr mischaracterized their findings. How did we get there? How did we get to? Okay, look. You see what the problem is with journalism today? Let this be the greatest example of how psychotic our culture has become in terms of journalism. His investigators felt Attorney General Barr mischaracterized their findings. That's the, that's, that's the summary conclusion now being posted even on Daily Caller. Daily Caller, you, you deserve some flack for this too, I suppose, because that's not what, what happened. His investigators, no. Because a source told the New York Times that someone they knew was told by someone else. That's double hearsay. That's like, a, what, how many game, it's Kev, it, might as well, it might as well be Kevin Bacon. You know, the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. You might as well be telling me Kevin Bacon told you all this stuff. My associate, Kevin Bacon. Because we don't know who or what you're talking about. And we're, so, listen, you want me, New York Times, to trust you as you trust a government official who trusts an associate who trusts Mueller's investigators? How insane is that? And now the Daily Caller is saying, report surfaces, investigators feel they're mischaracterized their findings. We don't even know that's true. Oh God, I just hate everything. You know, I kind of look at things from kind of like a scientific method. Is this verifiable data? No, it's hearsay. And we I, it's just nuts. Every page of the confidential report provided to Attorney General Barr on March 22nd, 2019 was marked by may contain material protected under federal R. Crim P6E, a law that protects confidential grand jury information and therefore could not be publicly released. 
Justice Department spokeswoman Carrie Kupek said in a statement to the Daily Caller. She continued, given the extraordinary public interest in the matter, the attorney general decided to release the report's bottom line findings and his conclusions immediately without attempting to summarize the report, with the understanding that the report itself would be released after the, after the redaction process. Whatever, man. All, all this does, you know, the way, the way that the, narr- the, narr- the narrative is now framed, even in the Daily Caller, it provides fuel to the wingnuts. Think about the fact that the investigation happened in the first place. It probably shouldn't have. You know, the investigation started. Sure, it's fine. But once we realize it was all literally a witch hunt, why are we here? How did we get here? I'll tell you how. This, exactly this, fake news. News organizations that just, pff, New York Times is trash. Listen, there have been several instances where I've called the New York Times for this kind of weird, circuitous game of telephone. My uncle's, my, my, my uncle's girlfriend's best friend's, you know, dad. And the last time I did, it was because they had an anonymous source talking to an anonymous source. It turned out they were right. It's possible that New York Times is right on this, but how you confirm this is insane. I have no idea. I'm going to leave it there. I'll see you guys tomorrow at 10 a.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out.